So in previous videos we've uh, learnt how to set Drupal up, we've looked at content types and how they're used as the basic kind of site building blocks for, well, I shouldn't use the word blocks there, but you know the site building parts uh, within Drupal and how you get content to the page, how you get something rendered as, as, as output. Um, we've learnt how to add fields to content types, we've looked at the use of views and the, the kind of scratch the surface of the the magic that that contains with its ability to take data from places and render lists of content and that kind of stuff and render it in different formats showing it in different outputs we've also looked at um we've just touched on the block system and how that works um what will we'll do a quick video now on context and then we'll have a look at um, custom modules. So here's our Drupal site. <clears throat> and as you may recall, we had placed this um, news block on the uh, right hand side. List news content was, was in the second sidebar. And if we go into the, and the, the way the way the Drupal block system works by default is it lists out all the regions you specify which uh, modules so which blocks go into those regions and then under the configuration settings you can specify some conditions so <clears throat> you can yeah say only list on you know node slash star or something like that which will show on all node pages but it wouldn't show on the front page it wouldn't show on a, um, a views page so if we for example save that um, and go back to our home page. The news block is now gone. But if I go into one of the nodes, it's there. And if I go to news, which is our views, that's it's gone because that's not a doesn't match the URL that we wanted. So you know, if, if the URL matches, then the then the news block will will uh, will, uh, will turn up there. Um, and that's that's kind of fine, but I, I don't know. It, it kind of it's not. It's certainly not the way that I would think about blocks. Um, and there is a module which uh, handles kind of block output um, in a it basically a different way. Rather than being kind of region specific, it looks at use cases. Um, so, for example, so if we we're in our, we're SSH into our, our Vagrant box, and I can do drush in dash y context. And that'll download that while I'm downloading that. Let me bring up the context uh, Drupal page. So that's context. Context is more than just blocks, but blocks is, is, is one of the key things that it, that it, that it can do. <clears throat> and note that when we use views, it was dependent on chaos tools or C tools. So context is as well. C tools is used by a lot of different things. With context now um, downloaded and enabled, if we go into structure, we maybe won't even see it. Maybe because it's not enabled. Let's enable that as well. Now if we refresh that, maybe we'll see context. Yes, there's context. So context allows you to <clears throat> make things a little more kind of descriptive around kind of what you want. So rather than saying I want um, a news block to appear on URL pages with this URL, what I'd probably like to say is I'd like to create a, um, a news context and um, A condition of that context is going to be, say for the sake of argument, is going to be um, node type and it's news and add a reaction to that. We're going to add a block. The block's going to go in the second sidebar. We want our block. We don't want our block, do we want it to view uh, list news content? Um, and we're going to add that to the second sidebar. So We've created something that's basically geared around what we're doing, which is news. And we've said that it's the news node type. 
and now we're going to do stuff. Whenever it's a news node type, we're going to do this stuff. So straight away, we can be more straight away. We can be more specific. I know we're there, we're there, it's all good, it's all good. We've got our nodes, we've got that, fantastic. Straight away, we've actually been more specific. So on um, under the block system, <coughs> oh, but we should, we should actually remove that from there because we don't need that there anymore. Um, under the block system, it was really just done on, on URL, whereas here we've done it on node type. So straight away, we've been a little bit more specific about how we want things to, uh, to show up. So here's our here's our content again. So now if we go into one of these pieces of content, um, so this I believe this is a page, isn't it? So we don't have our news block on the right hand side here because although it's it's node content, it's not news content, and our news content is showing up here. I uh, know this is still isn't news con. This isn't uh, a node type of news. This is this is views outputs. But if but these this content here should all be uh, of the node type news. So if we go into this, we should expect to see our news block on the right-hand side, and we do. That's the beauty of context, and with context, you can do um, all manner of different things um, to uh, trigger different things, whether it's around kind of menu or kind of the, you know, the URL or what the user's role is. You can create site-wide context that happens everywhere, and the reactions can include how you, you know, what menu items are kind of active, how it's themed, all that kind of stuff. But blocks is a is a kind of a classic one. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that. There's something else I'll probably come on to a bit later, and that's that some of these mod, some of the modules that we'll we'll look at. Um, of which views and context are are two. Um, I'd mentioned before that one of the challenges with views is that <clears throat> all the content, all the configuration, and effectively your business logic is stored in configuration, which is stored in the database, which makes it very difficult to version control. Um, and there will probably come a point where the complexity of that and the fact that the way it is constructed, the way it's defined is based around the logic, the, the kind of the use case of views rather than your specific use case will make that difficult to sustain. Um, particularly if you've got if you've got developers changing on the project, um, you know, one may know the system inside out, they may remember everything they've done and they may remember the reasons why everything was done. Um, but a new person comes on there and they've not really got anything to read through that's gonna tell them kind of, you know, why why stuff is set up the way it is. Um, so there's a challenge there's a challenge there. But anyway, um, there is a way of getting <clears throat> or some work has been done to try and kind of put the configuration that's created by things like views and things like context into a format that can be encapsulated in code. And that module is called features. And the idea is that you generate something called a feature. And, the, and what you do is you basically go through, you think about things in terms of a, a bundle of uh, functionality. So we might be our, uh, the news functionality. And we can say we want to take the, the news content type, the news, all the views that were related to news, and our, um, and our context for news, and we could bundle all those things up into a feature. And what features would then do is basically dump all of the settings that we'd created in views and context and all that kind of stuff. It would just dump it out to a to a file, which could then be taken to another Drupal installation. If you've got features installed there, you can just dump that feature in there, enable the feature, and it would recreate the content type, recreate the views, and recreate the context. And you would have that functionality there. Um, so you can get some way towards encapsulating your business logic in code, but you can't really read um, the features file. Not particularly. It doesn't you know? It's not particularly. It's not like reading something where you've written a class file that is where every line of code in that class file is about your use case, and there's no other stuff in there. It's just code about what you want to do, and 
there's a case for you know there, there is a there is a reason for using kind of both both of them one is very very fast to get things up and running it's very um if you're if you've got relatively lightweight stuff to do you know one of them will let you manage that stuff really easily um but when you're starting to get into more complex use cases that's where perhaps you want to be able to just kind of ensure that the amount of code or the code that you have that defines what you're doing is really geared around the work that you're doing. Then it'll make it more readable. It will also make it possible to bring it under test. You can't bring, you can't easily, again, you can't bring a feature under unit, in it, un, under a unit test. Some of this stuff may well change in Drupal 8. Drupal 8 is gonna be very, very different from Drupal 7. Um, Drupal 8 is gonna be much more based on, uh, it's heavily based on Symfony. Um, which is, um, I think, a fantastic move, um, and will probably help a lot in that in that area. Um, but you know, we're talking here about Drupal seven, so there are definitely decisions to be making. There's no, there are different tools to be used in different places. Um, and that's it. We'll leave that there. We'll, cause that's that's context. Um, in the next video, we'll probably talk about custom modules.